Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Taramap and, and this is yet another installment, installment in my Inspired Tarot Map series. And this time I'm hosting Rachel Rosenketter. Hi Rachel. Hello. And Rachel is the creatrix of the Rainbow Heart Tarot which just came out after a successful Kickstarter campaign and funny enough it arrived to me on the day when we caught up with Rachel for this interview so I'm Such perfect excited. timing I know perfect timing um it came with this cutest rainbow heart all the decks got the pin Rachel when they we're back. To oh, that one's just for you. Oh, so cute. Thank you. I love it though. The pin is amazing. So uh, can the pin be purchased if people want it? it? Can. It's, um, it's available in my web shop along with the deck. Okay. I just show it because it's, it's like this kind of pin. I, I'm going to put it on my back. In Poland, you know, we have uh, a lot of fights going on. Um, and uh, I'm just going to wear it here because our government, unfortunately, is very um, narrow-minded when it comes to that. And mm -hmm. rainbow became a very forbidden word wow. in the language. So uh, I'm definitely going to support the rainbow. So uh, thanks for awesome. this. Anyway, let's move on to the interview. Uh, I'm really excited to have you on because, Rachel, when I started watching on Instagram, when you were posting, you know, the cards from the deck, um, I was just going, I don't know what it was. And my friends who knew what, when I was like watching this deck coming to life, I was like, oh my God, I really want this deck. This deck is amazing. I was like running out of breath and uh, I'm not disappointed, which is great because very often when you set your expectations very high, you know, you can come crashing down. But in this case, it didn't happen. So I'm really excited about this deck. And before I even ask any questions, I just wanted to say that you've done a great job with this deck from like the execution of quality, just artistically how it looks. In my books, this is perfection. The size of the cards, paper, it's really stunning, stunning. So well done seriously well Thank done you so much. Uh, and um before i go and talk to you about all of this the tarot side the first questions that i always ask uh, my guests is about um ancestry because i'm always curious you know where where do people come from who's got your backs who are your ancestors so mm -hmm. um and maybe also where you live right now so we kind of can place you Sure. Um, so I was born and raised in Missouri, and I currently live in Portland, Oregon. Um, as far as ancestry goes, I'm kind of an American mutt, but mostly German and Irish. Okay, so the, 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 the surname would kind of, you, you, you drop the umlaut, but it, <laughs> it's like Rosenkutte, right? It would be the, the, kind of from the German side of your family. That's right. So Rosenketter is actually um, a name that I chose for myself. Ah. <laughs> uh, but but it is um, a family name from my mom's side of the family. It's this matrilineal name. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Because because I felt like it sounds it sounds German. So it, mm -hmm. it's nice nice That's to right. know. Okay. Thank you for sharing this. So let's move to everybody wants to hear about so this is your favorite i mean favorite my favorite <laughs> this is your first tarot deck right this is your first baby. Mm -hmm. and i was just curious before we move into why you made the deck like why tarot like you know how do you i think you are you here there okay because you froze for a while um i was curious about why tarot and um what is tarot to you? Like, how did you even get to love tarot, to, you know, love tarot enough to make your own deck, right? So how would you, what's your journey with tarot in general? Could you share that with us? Yeah, sure. So I started working with the tarot maybe about five years ago. It was kind of just dabbling at that point. But about two years after that, I experienced a significant loss in my life. And it was just a really challenging time for me. 
I was looking for answers and I, I turned to the tarot thinking that I could get these answers about my future. Um, and then like what I found instead was this really incredible tool for self-reflection in the moment. And so for me, that's always been my personal relationship to the tarot. Um, I certainly don't dispute its use as um, a divination tool, but for me, it's always been this magic mirror for seeing myself more clearly um, in the present, in the moment. Yeah, oh, beautiful, because I can, I probably wouldn't have put it much better myself for myself, you know, if I was to explain. Uh, and the same, like, I don't um, dispute that tarot kind of crosses over those boundaries. There's nothing black and white, like, oh, no, you can't use it for divination, or you can only use it for divination. But there's so much more to the whole system, which is just so inspiring and uh, well beyond answering questions about the future and so on. Uh, absolutely. And so, and so from that point, you know, it really helped me on this, this healing journey a couple of years ago. And I kind of reached a point where I realized, wow, like I really want to give back to this tradition that has given so much to me. And I felt like making my own deck would sort of be this completion of that healing process in a way. Wow, yeah. It's interesting, mm -hmm. Rachel, how, you know, I spoke to quite a few creators already and how many people um, came to creating a tarot deck as a healing process. Wow. Um, I even like looking at the strawberry tarot, um, I don't know if you know it, and I know that Alicia also spoke about this. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I was talking also recently to Stra Taro. Um, she just has, had a successful Kickstarter as well. Oh, and she was also creating a deck after her brother's death and her personal loss. And I'm just finding it really fascinating how, you know, seemingly the divination tool, as many people see it, can have such far reaching healing effect on people, especially when connected to art, I think. And that's what. Yeah, about the title that you have with art gallery in your hand, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, because you, uh, Rachel, you are an artist from like that's 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 your kind of uh, profession. Let's call it profession sure. know, for the better word. <laughs> sure. uh, my mission in life, but yeah, I'm an artist, an illustrator, and an educator. Yeah, and so that's that's what I do. Yeah, so that was like a perfect combo that you actually, mm -hmm. you created all the original artwork for, for your yeah, first yeah. deck. Okay, that answered my question perfectly. So then I wanted to ask kind of why did you make your own deck? Couldn't you just decide on any other beautiful tarot deck out there and, you know, just stick to it? But like, why mm -hmm. your own? Like, I know you mentioned something you wanted to kind of give back also to the tradition and the healing process. Is Was there any other kind of, Maybe, I don't know, artistic reason, I just wanted to create my own art for Arcanas or? Yeah, I think part of it too is that I have this real fascination in my art practice with um, spiritual traditions, with sort of um, spiritual experience and all of the imagery and iconography that kind of gravitates around these different experiences and states and I'm especially interested in esoteric systems like the tarot or like the chakras um, and I'm drawn to that use that kind of material as a jumping off point. Um, the beautiful thing for me about illustrating a tarot deck is that it was this system for creating 78 paintings, but all of the paintings were already chosen for me. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and so it was like, <laughs> it, it's, it's like this beautiful jumping off point where you can go, how do I want to interpret this image or how do I want to add my own meaning? Um, because, you know, like I mentioned, tarot has this, rich lineage, hundreds of years of people making decks. And so um, 
it really leaves a lot of room for deciding like where to be inventive and where to make something that's bold and new and where to hold on to like the wisdom that is already existing in a certain tradition. Yeah, I know yeah. It's like, you have this map, you kind of like, you can veer off a little bit, but if you veer off too much, you kind of lose the connection to the original kind of seed. But at the same time, like uh -huh. we're bound to develop this tool because yeah, times are changing and we're all not going to stick to, you know, Rider Wade Smith images, the original images or just to right. talk images. Even the TOF at least was a little bit more abstract and kind of how crazy is TOF system for from the art perspective because this art could have been created like yesterday really and it would have you know protected oh. itself. It's pretty universal in this like I think so. Um, but either way, if you can see, it's kind of a bit more vintage look. The art has a different you know and the kind of pace to it. But TOF mm -hmm. it's very kind of much like outside of the of time somehow for me. Hey, right. yeah, it feels very contemporary. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah, exactly. I was so thinking, wow, Frida Harris, she was like amazing. Oh, artist. a visionary. Yeah, and so probably work with Alistair Crowley must have been <laughs> a bit of a journey of itself. Oh my so. gosh, I should <laughs> bet. Yeah, but but all the was a character. I know exactly. So it's pretty oh. incredible that that just even happened. So I wanted to ask you about a few cards in the deck, and then yeah. I wanted to ask you to share maybe your favorite cards. Okay, but first let's speak. Maybe if people, um, I don't know how many people from who is watching have the deck. So I'm going to show the cards uh, that I want to ask about so first i wanted to ask you why did you pick the artemis or diana of ephesus mm -hmm. for, for the empress and i'm asking this because this is one of my favorite depictions of um artemis or diana however we called her and um yeah when i saw it i was like oh my <laughs> god <laughs> now i like this deck even more <laughs> then just i love it so could you sh like share a little bit the background sure yeah um this was one of the cards that I think I was maybe the most excited to draw, but um, basically I just, I really wanted to communicate this kind of fertility goddess, earth goddess read of the card. Um, like in the Rider Waite Smith, the Empress is depicted wearing this kind of chaste flowing gown. And I was like, this is a card about sensuality and sexuality and more than that just abundance the abundance of nature the abundance of the earth and kind of trying to personify that in a way um with like the many breasts the the wheat in the hand um kind of all of these traditional symbols of the empress but um yeah with that strong central yeah. focus of the the kind of artemis figure yeah, I love the swan as well, this fierce loving also and that roses. You know, I always look and I'm like, oh yeah, Mary, connection to Mary, connection to Mary. Sure. But it's it's amazing. And, and then I wanted to ask about this uh, strength card because, you know, I was looking through the cards and I'm thinking, oh, that's interesting. Like it's usually, you know, as we were talking before we recorded, I was like the, the strength card, the woman is always like kind of in control in a sense, like she's gentle and, but she does look kind of she doesn't look away I was just wondering like why this depiction seems to have the you know huge lion and what were you what was in your head when you made it yeah so um as as I'm sure you know some decks and oh, because, because oh, we lost. you're freezing up for a second yeah yeah am I back yeah you are back so maybe start okay. from the beginning <laughs> sure um, I was just saying that, as I'm sure you know, strength is called lust in some decks. Yeah. And um, it's a card that often is read as being about self-control um, in some instances, or like our relationship to our primal animal desires, like our inner strength, um, having access to our instincts. And so I just wanted to give a slightly different spin on the card by painting it in a way that um, 
it's not so much about control as it is about giving in at times um, and and listening to our instincts and um, being overwhelmed by our desires mm. and that being a beautiful thing. Yeah. And also that kind of, um, that overwhelming, uh, like being overwhelmed by the desires also kind of <clears throat> creates the strength in you, like on how, in so far, how much you wanted to like surrender and, you know, support it. Yeah. Or when maybe in certain times it's good to say, hey, no, you know, the healthy boundaries, because often, you know, from psychological um, side um, of tarot, this can be a cut even of like sexual abuse or any side of abuse, sure. crossing the boundaries of, you know, um, of, of healthy boundaries. So it's an interesting card can be really deep, but I, yeah, I found it interesting that usually you have like, and you know, she's not that she, she's kind of embracing the lion too. Yeah. So it's not like she's, oh, I don't want to see you, but yeah, I found it quite yeah, different. So then this guy, <laughs> what's <Yeah>. he doing? <laughs> So, so there are several cards in the deck, um, most of the court cards and a few others that depict people in my life, um, friends, relatives, and this card, this is my best friend, Ira, and he is a maker of masks. He's mm -hmm. also an artist, and so the Eight of Pentacles is kind of a card that's about craftsmanship and dedication and just having this active practice of making and so I wanted to depict him for that card both because he's one of the most talented artists I know but also like in in an aspirational way some of these cards are like are like prayers for what I want for some of the people okay cool and so yeah yeah, the oh. magical aspect of Tara, also wonderful. Like, I was thinking, like, I think he makes those masks, but it's just, yeah, like, oh. untypical, you know. It's like, yeah, I think he's the mask maker, but yep. wanted to ask, okay. And then you mentioned the fascination with, like, all the esoteric systems, but mm -hmm. I love the Seven of Pentacles that you kind of chose, you know, rather than the coins, the, the chakras. Um, uh -huh. And so you understood it in the same way that like she's pregnant. Can you just say maybe from your own perspective, like how you saw this card? Sure. So um, I think I see the entire suit of pentacles as having this strong relationship um, to the body and to the earth. And I kind of wanted to drive that connection home even further by placing the chakras in the bushes as if they're growing there. Um, kind of having this, yeah, this deep connection to the earth, this embodiment, um, and this, this being a card about, like, fruitfulness and patience and kind of waiting for the harvest. Um, yeah, yeah, that fits, that fits perfectly. I love it. And then I thought the Seven of Swords, not that I don't understand the art so much, but I'm just curious how you understand Seven of Swords, because it's such a yeah, it's kind of a difficult card. I mean, maybe it's not difficult, but like everybody seems to be seeing it a bit differently. And it can be a reset, uh -huh. and it can be a thievery, and it can be, you know, like, can go like a million ways. So how do you read Seven of Swords in this particular case? Yeah, I guess I see the Seven of Swords as, I mean, it often depicts, like, like you said, the thief, the person sneaking away with the swords. Um, but I wanted it to be almost more just this sense of um, when you froze you froze up. Yeah, you see me. Okay, please go to that now. <laughs> you wanted to see it to be. <laughs> um, oh, I was just saying that to me, the Seven of Swords is kind of about this foreboding like I think of it as being a card that there is information that you don't know yet that is going to be revealed maybe there's something you're not being honest with yourself about I think is oftentimes the most likely case um yeah so like a card that when you draw it is meant to make you reflect like what what is the thing I'm not dealing with mm. what is 
thing that I'm needing to to admit to myself that I haven't. It could be like this kind of little bit type of a warning, like, hey, notice, because that's this that's a red snake, right? When you're like, hey, mm-hmm. pay attention, right? Like this type right. of pay attention. Okay, cool. It's an interesting um card. So can you show me your favorite cards from the deck now? Well, I'm curious yeah, sure. which ones are your favorite. And then I show you mine. <laughs> you show me yours and I show you mine. <laughs> so I really love the Seven of Cups. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I see this card as being kind of just a really visionary card in terms of just how wild the content is. Um, but it's also this sort of like abundance of choices. Like, like what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose um, adventure, uh, security, the castle, mystery, um, you know, sensual pleasures, love, um, uh, maybe like a spiritual path, a sort of like Kundalini awakening or something. And so I love this card, not just not just in my deck, but um, in general. I think it's a really interesting card. Yeah. Um, also, the Four of Swords in particular, I'm just really pleased with uh, my own depiction of this card. It shows this sort of like warrior of love waiting in this rose quartz pyramid, just kind of recharging. And I guess I've just never seen it depicted quite like this, which is why I'm happy with how it turned out. There's one similar depiction, not with the knight, but um, in Mm -hmm. Mother Pistara, there's a woman, I think she's got like seven chakras in the round deck. Oh, oh, you're totally right. I don't know if it's a pyramid, but it's like, yeah, it looks either like a tent or, you know, like a triangular pyramidal, pyramid-like shape. So uh-huh. that just reminded me a little bit of this, but definitely she didn't have, she wasn't a knight. Sure. Was I love the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that sure just that seeped into my unconscious. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Also the Two of Cups, this kind of unity, this kind of feeling of the soulmate or the twin flame uh, with the heart visible in both people, the same heart and the dove kind of coming down and uniting them with these flowers. Oh, that's one of my favorites too. Also this like, you know, alchemical marriage, it can go so much deeper, something with that. You know, the, um, I told you about this walking with Mary and uh, with Hetien we do this, we have like this order of the dove. So when I saw this and this white dove coming down and like, you know, this connection, I was like, oh my God, this yeah. is so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's important to like with this card and um, with the lovers as well, like those cards can be totally about self-love. It doesn't have to be about the other. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. Or like this equalizing even all these forces within ourselves. Like we can call them feminine, masculine, you know, what are, you know, yin, yang. But like, yeah, we all have these yeah. parts that somehow, yeah, we're balancing on our, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, cool. Let's uh, look at that. Um, I've got two more if that's okay. Perfect. Yeah, of course. Um, also, the Ten of Swords. I know this is a really super intense card it can be really frightening to draw it but um it's kind of this like it's always darkest before the dawn kind of a card um and i i like the way that oh wait you have to repeat <laughs> oh, I feel I like the way that the figure is split in a way between like the the gray and the black, um, and that the red could be interpreted as hair or it could be interpreted as blood in a way. Ah, uh, you know, like when I look at these cards now, I'm just like, yeah, red hair, Mary Magdalene, and black Madonna, and then the white Madonna on top, you know, and like this split of the like feminine also over mm-hmm. the yeah. I love this card and you know when I was looking through the deck first time and I saw eight of swords and I was thinking well that looks a bit like ten of swords but then I saw the ten of swords and I thought oh no that's fucking it's fine 
This is perfect. I love this card. Um, and then last of all, the moon, um, sort of connecting the cyclical nature of the moon to uh, the kind of cyclical life of people with vulvas. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with how it turned out. And I think it's been an image that has seemed to resonate with a lot of other people as well. Yeah. I love how you said that people with vulvas, because sometimes, you know, the language now, I know that we need to expand on our language, but it's sometimes so sure. difficult to like, like you lack words and, or you're like, you know, you kind of forget yourself and keep this kind of rep repeat, rep repeating, you know, what you knew until this yeah. day. I love these people with vulvas. That's really cool. So I'm going to share you, share with you my favorite cards. Okay. So wait, I'm going I to play this the view so i love the star mm. i think because we talked about it i don't know there is you did something that like the gold and silver in your deck it, it mm -hmm. just looks like there's like just a little bit different texture i think in the original um and yeah just i said even in my ig video i'm like oh yeah i would like it to have some glitter because you know, it wants uh -huh. to make this thing <laughs> but i love this love this card it's really just fills me with such a like wow so i don't know fits the star i love the ice uh, uh, ace of cups mm -hmm. just for the dove itself but also i don't know just so peaceful and really gorgeous queen of pentacles reminds me of mary so of course mm -hmm. i love her mm -hmm. ten of swords i picked it as well i love it it's so good sometimes like uh, from my personal like ten of swords often is like my my, my menstruation so i love how this also you know yeah. keeps flowing um i love the high priestess mm. beautiful and i love the five five of cups and also <laughs> the five of pentacles as well yeah you know, just you know it stands out because the deck is so colorful and kind of cheery and happy and then when you get this like kind of so-called darker cards i sure. i love it they like it makes a statement with all the other you know really colorful ones so i think that looks really gorgeous but this one also really cool mm. and yeah i picked two of cups as well it's really gorgeous i picked the moon as well and i also picked the um queen of swords because she also reminds me of mary that's just this sorrowful kind of mother side of, mm -hmm. of the you know um the feminine energy here so yeah lovely oh, this deck i love it i love it okay so um inspiration as an artist and your connection to color because i don't think it will take anybody too long to realize that this woman <laughs> loves color you know <laughs> it's a deck full of color and actually today was such a shitty day in poland like it was gray and rainy and kind of suddenly you know we had 30 degrees yesterday and today 12 you had to you felt like oh autumn came and this deck arrived and i'm like oh that's good such a you know breath of fresh air and this color just brought a smile to my face so What's like as an artist, like how, uh, tell me about your inspiration, like what inspires you and why color so much? Sure. Um, so with this deck in particular, I was really inspired by a lot of the vintage decks from the 70s. There was like a little bit of a golden age of tarot with a lot of really graphic use of colors and um, clean. You're gone again. Oh, Rachel, come Am I back now? Yeah, you, you come, you're back. Okay. Clean, clean lines. <laughs> clean lines, bold colors, super graphic. Um, I love these decks from the 70s. And so that was, that was a huge inspiration in, in terms of the aesthetic of the deck. And then as far as my color palettes go, um, they really come from a lot of diverse sources. Sometimes I look directly at vintage textiles. I'll take color palettes directly from like dresses that I own, vintage dresses. 
or uh, photographs of deserts, photographs of the Southwest, yeah, um, of the United States, and yeah, also uh, vintage posters from like the late '60s, early '70s in terms of stylization, and um, I think that just reflects a strong interest in psychedelia, and then also a lot of like I've mentioned, like spiritual traditions um, and the kind of... I think we've lost you again, Rachel. Oh, what was the last thing you heard? <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, psychedelic traditions. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So psychedelia, um, different spiritual traditions and the kind of bizarre but beautiful imagery that comes out of a lot of those traditions um, and really wanting to kind of syncretize a lot of my own interests whether aesthetic or intellectual into one place into this tarot deck yeah i and actually it does feel when we spoke before i told you like i had this sense when you hold the deck it feels kind of vintage like you know it's a vintage but it feels vintage and the font you picked like just the art style you chose the boldness of color um yeah it does have this kind of vintagey feel to it which i love as well so it's it's really kind of um yeah did you make it you made a deck for me i just like it thank you <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really wanted to make a deck that both felt vintage, like felt like it could be from another time, but that also felt like really new and fresh in another way. Yeah, yeah, it does, it, it, it does have both, because you, you do have the sense of, um, yeah, of, of combination of, in general, like, you know, it's like, you know, it's a new deck, but it has the the, the vintage energy and the vintage feel, not in the cards themselves, but just the air and the flows around uh -huh. it. Yeah, I really, I really like love it. And I think also, you know, just the, um, the artistic choice of like the font, it all brings you into this, um, yeah, the other, the other times, maybe simpler, maybe not, but yeah, right. the other times, right? Mm. So I wanted to also ask you about, because this is uh, based on the rider Waite smith uh, system. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your favorite tarot system? Is this rider Waite smith It's the one you connect with the most? Um, in terms of the overall system, I feel like, I feel like it's difficult to, to think about or talk about the tarot or make a tarot deck without thinking about the Rider Waite Smith, it kind of casts this like huge light or this huge shadow um, over the entire tradition. And I, I think it's still to this day, like when most people think of the tarot, that's the deck they're imagining in their mind if they're if they're imagining a single deck. And so um I guess my feeling in creating my deck was that if I was going to create a tarot deck, um, I wanted it to be uh, kind of definitely tied to that tradition. And that if I wanted to make something that wasn't, I'd probably make an oracle deck instead, which, which is not to in any way knock um, any of the decks that are not Rider Waite Smith clones. Those are actually some of my favorite decks. Yeah. So um, I wanted to actually mention something about the Oracle deck that you would do if you didn't do, but you still uh -huh. can do, right? Because sure. you know, right? the Rainbow Hat Tarot might need an Oracle deck uh -huh. <laughs> in the nearest future. So much more freedom. <laughs> mm. Even though when I spoke to, um, I think, Alicia from the Embroidered Tarot uh, deck, I don't know if you know this one, uh, she did the whole tarot deck um, via embroidery. So she was just like, you know. Oh, wow. Like, imagine so how much work would that be like? I mean, oh, not that the gosh. painting it is less work, but yeah, just for me, this would be 
a punishment if I had to I told Alicia I'm like oh my god I don't know how much work you put into it but like I'm so bad with needles so I would never in any foreseeable future I can't see myself doing this and I just thought like oh my god that's so much work but it's an amazing deck also the embroidered forest tarot and um and what oh my god now I lost the thought uh, about oracle deck and we were talking about oracle deck hmm i'm sorry guys now i don't know what i wanted to really ask you but we did speak about alicia about something right it was definitely important anyway let's skip that question because i don't know what it was so now i caught i caught the bag i'm like mm, the blank has arrived <laughs> okay but let's so let's move on to um your favorite tarot decks right now, mm -hmm. aside of your own deck. Sure. We're, assuming you, we're assuming you love it. <laughs> so one of my very favorite decks is the Lioness Oracle Tarot. Yeah. Um, so beautiful, just this really richly collaged deck. Yeah, it's a gorgeous deck gilded edges. Um, I love the guidebook that comes with it. And so prior to the printing of my own deck, this is the deck that I used the most often um, to do readings for myself. I and also funny, love... I'm sorry that I interrupt, but she also created this deck after she lost her father or... Uh... That's right. Right? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. It was in yeah. the wake of a loss for her as well. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think she has two other decks as well. Um, yeah, she's got the Oracle deck as well, which I have. And mm -hmm. she did something with astrology, I think, like another deck with astrology. Yeah, the Stars Divine, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, this is one of my favorite vintage decks, the Tarot Baldi. Yeah, I could imagine you liking this for the color. Yeah. <laughs> Where, yeah, it's got these really vibrant colors and um, just love the style. Yeah, this one actually, yeah, I could see this uh, influence also in your uh -huh. in your deck. Actually, now when you showed the court cards, especially in court cards, um, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, cool. Um, I also love Oliver Hibbert's tarot. Yeah, I don't, I don't have this one. This is the box. Ah, I know, the kind of crazy, yeah, like, psychedelic it, one, right? It's, yeah, it's very psychedelic. It's basically, it's a Rider Waite Smith clone. Yes. Um, you know, using the cards as, like, very, like, the compositions are barely changed. Um, but the sort of, yeah, so the, the color and the stylization, as you can see, is just... Yeah. Super, super wild. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and then this one came out last year, the Modern Witch Tarot. Yeah, that's a very cool deck. Um, it's a super, super femme-centric deck, and the women depicted are just so stylish. <laughs> Um, they all have such cool, cool outfits, and I, yeah, I love these illustrations. Yeah, and the color palettes is also very cool. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it's typical, not the, the, the usual, um, kind, I mean, the usual, I don't know what's the usual, but <laughs> you don't see very many decks with this, typic, like, with this um, type of color. Yeah, I love her illustration style and just how she handles the individual cards. Yeah, and it's also like quite inclusive deck and I love that you also yeah. did uh, an inclusive deck and different body types, different, you know, a uh, page of uh, cups looks very queer to me. It has a bit of makeup going and it's like just, yeah, different colors and it's really cool. I think that's really well done too. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to make something that was inclusive. Um, I've actually thought, I think if I did a second edition, I could do even better. Yeah. I could, 
I could I could do even better in terms of inclusivity. I think we can all always be doing better. Yeah, definitely. On that front. Yeah. Um, and then the last deck I wanted to show is the Mini Queens Tarot. It's a deck that my friend Letty created. Um, here's the fool. Oh, that's the, the black and white one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's black and white, and we don't have this one. She, it's amazing. She made all of the illustrations for the whole deck in like less than a hundred days. Wow. Yeah. So she took this very, very intuitive approach and kind of wanted to make something that would give people um, cards with like a different kind of representation of female beauty and body image and womanhood and and just really diverse depictions. I love this deck. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, show us. Wait, maybe I put you on bigger screen so you can show us now. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Maybe mm -hmm. show us the one more from this deck. One more card. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Here's the world. Yeah, so it's a many queens, so it's just uh, just the queens, right? Just the females. Yeah, it's all it's all women and femme folks in the deck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so those are a few of my favorites. It's hard to choose. I <laughs> I, I love tarot. I yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were laughing before <laughs> I we left myself to five. <laughs> exactly. We were laughing before we started recording, like, oh, choose one <laughs> favorite deck. Impossible, right? right? I think I remembered what I wanted to say with <laughs> with Alicia and the Oracle mm -hmm. deck because she has created the tarot deck. But right now she is creating an oracle deck um, oh, in yeah. the same style, you know, kind of also embroiders all the cards and oh, cool. uh, she has like a theme. Ah, and also what I wanted to say, because that's what she said, so I'm kind of paraphrasing, that um, it's sometimes easier to have that system of tarot because, you know, we were talking about is it easier to create a tarot deck or is it easier to create an oracle deck, which seems easier because you have all this freedom in the world and yeah. no limitations, but sometimes it's quite like overwhelming in a sense that there's yeah. no limitations, so you kind of can do anything and sometimes it's like, so what should I do, you know? Here at least you, as you said, you have kind of this pictures prepared for you and you just kind of can go free with your inspiration about your own expression of the archetype but with the oracle oh, deck sometimes it's like okay I can do anything <laughs> and it's going to be so I found it interesting when she mentioned this I was like yeah and can really help to have those constraints yeah yeah in some it's sense I think it can Unless you have like, you know, this subject that's like so dear, like, and I think whenever you do Oracle, maybe there is also like with Tarot, there's some sense of probably a board, like kind of borders, you know, that it's, I don't know, healing deck or um, empowering or whatever, like, you know, just something that you will know it's kind of has to fit some, some A to Z a little bit at least. Maybe, I don't know, actually, I don't know. But yeah, that's what I wanted to mention when I got mental blank. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we're nearing actually the end of our interview. And I think it was really interesting for us to show all the gorgeous cards and just hear your perspective on, on the cards. Because I, I would love to do it with every creator if I could, just to mm -hmm. tell me, you know, because there's always a one card or two cards when you just go why is this depicted like like you know like what does it mean really what was she thinking yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always awesome to hear from artists themselves when you know they can share with us and um the last question that i usually ask also is about how do you use cards how do you use tarot do you use tarot every day do you use do you love spreads what what's your favorite way of using cards if you could share so i'd say my personal favorite way to use the, tar the tarot, I'm just going to paint a picture of my ideal, ideal evening would be like, it's a rainy day, it's a rainy night, I'm cozy in my bed. Um, I maybe meditate and get clear first and then 
do a reading for myself, um, pull some cards, and then journal about it and and dive pretty deep with it. Yeah. And um, that's my favorite way to work with the tarot. And when you journal, do you just like um, write your own experiences? Would you just go and do some research as well later on, or you just write from what what you feel? You yeah. know how sometimes what I mean, like, like let's say, I don't know, I get this card and I see a snake. So, okay, right now for me, the snake would be this and this, but then I would also maybe check, you know, Google snake and like go yeah. on this whole tangent and diversion into like the snake world. And <laughs> sure. So it's really interesting that you ask that because, so in the past, when I would do readings for myself with other people's decks, there was always this kind of additional research that I would end up doing to like dive a little deeper. But now in this last month, since I've been reading with my own deck, it's wild because it's like, I never look at the guidebook. I literally wrote the guidebook. <laughs> like, I don't need to go like, what does this symbol mean? I already spent years like deciding. Yeah. Um, and so it's wild. It's like, it's already layered with all of this um, personal symbology that's meaningful to me. Yeah, yeah, literally people in my life, so situations, cool. um, and so, so yeah, I, I haven't been doing follow-up research of any kind anymore. Um, I've yeah. just been, just been writing and reflecting. I just find it so amazing just to finish off, like, you know, how for you it's personal in a sense, and then for me it can have totally, it's personal, but in such a different way, you know, like, even with this, like, this Mary Magdalene, like, you can... Ah, and it wasn't your intention to fucking think of Mary Magdalene here, you know, like, but right. it's so interesting how tarot and art in general can be so connected through tarot image, like we both know what kind of source is, and yet we can all add this little different... Oh yeah, we all bring our own interpretation yeah. to it. I love it's, it. It's amazing. It's, um, I think this is the first piece of art that I've ever made it has so truly such a life of its own out in the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's I can really really humbling about that. Wow. Yeah. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for coming. First of all, birthing this deck, then coming up on, on Inspired Tarot Map and sharing all that you shared with us. And it was lovely to connect with you. So thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, you so much i really really appreciate it uh, oh we've lost you <laughs> oh no oh no i was just saying know. thank what, you what did you appreciate? <laughs> <laughs> i just appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and um you've been really beautiful in promoting my deck to the world and um <laughs> Yeah, I just, do you mind if I leave your listeners with a few places they can find me or find my work? Well, definitely, please do. And also I will link um, link this in the description bo box as well, you know, all the okay. links. But please share, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so uh, folks can find me on Instagram at Rainbow Heart Tarot. You can follow my larger art practice at, at Rachel Rosenketter. Um, my website is rachelrosenketter.com. You can find the Rainbow Heart Tarot at rainbowhearttarot.com. So and then, yeah, before you go further, the tarot deck is available right now on sale through your website or? That's also, correct. Are there any other shops storing it or for now is it um, just through you? There are a couple of new stockists carrying it. Um, for folks who live in Portland, Oregon, you can find it at Psychic Sister. You can find it at the Raven's Wing Magical Co. And um, for those who are living outside of the United States, it's best to purchase it through my Etsy shop, which okay. is Paint My World Rainbow. That's because there's an issue with international shipping with my normal website that I'm still trying to get ironed out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up is that in September starting, let me look at my calendar. It's now. 
Starting, st I, I know September is now, but um, uh. <laughs> uh, this, this class I'm going to teach is starting September 17th. It's a class on illustrating a tarot deck. And so oh, cool. this will be my second time teaching it. It's, it's all online, so you can take it from anywhere. And um, I'm just really excited to share all of my, uh, everything I learned that I wish somebody else would have told me. Yeah. in this process yeah i can imagine that yeah. you have this experience why you do it and then once you do it you have so much more to to share about it yeah uh -huh. cool wonderful and all the links as i said are going to be um in the description box so the guys can just go and you know press on the link and it will take them so we will link all of this and thank you everyone for listening first thanks rachel and uh, i see you guys another time thank you bye bye Stop recording.